What are you guys doing out here? It's Halloween. We've been trick-or-treating. Are you alone? There's a creepy man in a white mask. Where? And he keeps, like, trying to play hide-and-seek with us. Where did you see him? Look! Set the fire. No one told you. <gasps> told me what? Michael Myers is alive. A man couldn't have survived that fire. <laughs> Forty years ago, the boogeyman came for us. We are the survivors of Michael Myers. Lori, what do we do? We fight. Mom, our family will kill him. We're gonna hunt him down and we're gonna put an end to this. He is not gonna stop killing until we stop him. If you track Michael's victims, that's a straight line to Michael's childhood home. Someone's in our house. He is coming for me, but I'm coming for him. Podcast. That's our movie to podcast. It is the last weekend in October Noir, but we're Bucky tradition because it's the spookiest day of the year. It is. That's right. All Hollows Eve, the night where kids beg for candy. <laughs> it's, it's the night where evil dies, Gogs. It's right, evil yeah. dies. Come on, yeah, stay on, stay night. on theme. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, it's, it, it's just you know, it's the world's most socialist of holidays just sharing the candy wealth, and I'm really surprised that the right abides it. Anywho. Oh, they, they don't, actually. Oh, that's, right, like, that's, like a, that's like a classic conservative point that they hate Halloween. That's like, they, that goes back to when, before they, like, we were kids. They dress up like Nazis and stuff. Yeah. They love fun. costumery, so why they, don't yeah. they love Halloween? <laughs> um, uh, anyway, we uh, watched Halloween Kills, yes. which is a movie? It's barely a movie. Um, we'll get into it. I mean, it's not. It's going to be the world's shortest synopsis. Which, so. which for uh, for everybody at home, I I actually watched this twice now for the show because I've I watched it. I already you're watched it. To your art, man. I already watched it, but then I felt bad that y'all had to watch it, so I watched it. Like I wanted to suffer in solidarity with all of you. Yeah. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, I don't know. Smugness. Um, so what did we all watch this week? We all we haven't. This is a full a power show. About. Yeah. Um, out. Out. Um, I don't know. I got a bunch of stuff because it's been like three weeks, but I'm not going to talk about all of it. Uh, watched. Uh, actually, I watched a couple of DC animated movies. I watched Reign oh, cool. of the Reign of the Supermen. Oh. Which uh, I re I liked. Um. Not sure how familiar you guys are. I know TJ is, but about oh yeah, uh, Gogs and Sean, how familiar you, you familiar you are with the Return of Superman and Reign of the Supermen comics? Is that like, like when you had the Cyborg one and the yeah. and Steel and Superboy, yeah. right? Yes, but I saw the movie. I think is it the one where uh, Superboy is like Lex's clone, or he's like a Chimera of the two, or some shit? Um. He's a clone of Superman, but he Lex like owns him. Okay, in I the, think that that's the, the same anime. way in the comics too, if I remember correctly. 
I think that was the reveal. I don't know. I remember that that was one of the only points in my childhood where I cared about Superman comics because I was like really wrapped up in the whole return thing. I thought it was really exciting. And I loved um, the cyborg Superman. He was my favorite one. I thought he was like the coolest one. And then he's still a super. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You're fine. Didn't they have a Super Nintendo game? Yeah, that's that, how like, I was gonna... focused on yeah, that. Yeah, like, did. and you could play all the different Supermen. It was like a beat 'em up. Yeah, it was like a final fight, right? I think the thing I remember most about the comic series is like, I think like Dan Jurgens drew some of it, and he drew like my least favorite X Factor shit too. I wasn't like oh, a big yeah. fan of his. He he did because they what they did that like it was across because I guess Superman had like four titles at that time. Yeah, he had Superman, Action Comics, Man of Tomorrow, and something else. Yeah, yeah. So the whole Death of Superman and Return of Superman was across all four comics. Um, so you got the different artists, the different like storytellers, and the one artist I remember, I can't remember, I don't remember his name, but like I thought he was so shitty and so <laughs> sloppy. I forget which comic it was. It was it might uh, have been it- Action. I think I know who you're talking. It's uh, I, it's the guy who has like a real like wide style. Um, it's like yeah, I, I can't think of his name either. But yeah, I know exactly who you're talking. But like about. at that point, like all the other artists kind of were very similar and very like crisp, and he was yeah. like sloppy and and I hated it just because yeah, it had- was so <laughs> different than the other styles. Yeah, like Dan Jurgens and like um, Jerry Orway had two. Like they're very similar artists. Like they they flow together. Um, but yeah, I, I want to say it wasn't Walter Simonson, but I can't remember who it was, but it was somebody it that um, had... Ostrander, was it? It might've been, it might've been, but I don't, honestly, I don't know any of the names of them except for Dan Jurgens. I would have to go, like, I have the book upstairs. I'd have to go look at it. Um, but the movie, well, for, for back, back to my original point, that, that <laughs> comic was so fucking convoluted. And that whole series for the return was so convoluted and ridiculous. The movie is equally as convoluted and ridiculous, but it doesn't follow the same story at all. It's a totally different, totally different story and uh, and comeback. And I did like it. I didn't think it was great, but I did enjoy it. Um, probably, and I'll touch on this on my next next thing I talk about. Um, Probably the biggest problem for me with all these DC animated movies, the movies themselves are great, but it's a shame they can't get the same voice cast for all of them. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they switch from, like, movie to movie. And, like, I watched two DC Superman movies that came out, like, a year or two apart, and it's totally different voice cast for everybody. <laughs> yeah, it throws <laughs> like, off. The Reign, the Reign yeah. of the Superman had, like, a... Not an all-star voice cast, but it was all actual people. Like Lex Luthor was Rain Williams. Uh, oh no, shit! Wonder Woman or uh, Lois was Rebecca Romaine. I think Rosario Dawson was Wonder Woman. Like it's all people that like I recognize. But the second one that I watched, Injustice, it was. Oh, you watched that it, one? I, yeah, I wanted to watch that. It was just like it was just people. I didn't recognize any of them. Yeah, it um, sucks because, like, DC did such a good job for years, like, with all the Batman cast. Like, Kevin Conroy was the, the default Batman voice for so long. And, like, it keeps it keeps continuity together in your head, you know what I mean? It's not Yeah. Like and oh, especially uh, where they they seem to be churning out a ton of DC animated stuff. Yeah. Like, a couple a year, which is great because it's good. But, like, I want some kind of continuity in there. It does oh, not think- a different voice actor for every movie. The artist uh, we're talking about, I got mixed up. The guy that was on X Factor that I think is probably the one nobody likes is John Bogendove or yeah, Bogondiv yeah. or something. I up too. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's who it is. Um, but Injustice I thought was good too. I never played the game, and I'm sure that comics associated with it. I yeah, never they had a the whole game. series of comics. The games are great. The games are a lot of fun. Yeah, I never played the game or did the comics, but like it is brutal. Like this movie is fucking brutal right off the bat. Like you, I was shocked. Wait, which one? Wait, this is the other one or is this in, the Injustice? There's a pretty f- like famous meme image from the Injustice comics where Superman's sticking his whole hand through the Joker. Like, yeah. Does it's it pretty- follow? Does it follow the? Does the, the yeah. follow the plot of the? the so wait, is game. the game? The video game is based on a 
a no. story arc? I just thought it was just no. The, the movie video. is ahead, based Sean. on a game, which is not based on a comic, but uses the comic book characters. Well, the com- but the video game spawned a comic. They yeah. they they made a comic because the game was so popular. But like okay, the so comic follows the storyline of the game. So the order is game, comic, movie. Yes. Weird. Okay. Cool. Or I guess Mortal Kombat. Okay. But like the, the, the video Mortal Kombat process. But like the to the video game's credit, the video game has both of them have really good storylines. I like liked the, Injustice. You, that was cool. If you play the first, like the first part, like the uh, first player, like campaign, like the storyline's actually really good. Yeah, I never so played yeah. the game. I don't even know if I had heard of the game. But the movie, the movie's good. And like, yeah, it's like there's a lot of kill, a lot of death in this movie. Like, I was shocked how many yeah. like, and I guess DC does that with their Elseworld stuff a lot. But yeah. uh, I was shocked how many like main characters got off, like right off the bat, like immediately at the beginning of the movie. Like, main characters just getting blown away. I was like, oh my god, I need to watch it. I haven't seen it yet, Alec, but does it have that, like, I don't know if you can answer this or not. I don't know how many of you have seen it. Does it have that kind of, like, newish art style where it's, like, that blend of, like, the Bruce Tim and also, like, kind of mango where everybody looks super young and it's, like, a little bit off-putting or no? I don't think so. Okay. Um, no, I don't think so. I thought it was pretty a fairly, fairly classic animation style. Cool. Like, following some of the other DC animated stuff that I've seen. It's on the Plex, so if you want to watch it, it's on there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where I watched it. And it's it's yeah. it's good. I uh, it's not all on H oh, it's probably also on HBO, right? Well yeah, I think it is right actually Yeah, I believe I did watch it on HBO because I just went to their their like D C archive to look at all uh, their right. animated stuff. Um uh, the last thing I'll talk about is uh the Nightmare Before Christmas. Hmm. This Ugh. is Halloween. This is Halloween. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time I've seen that movie. Like all the oh, way through really? that movie. That movie's excellent. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> like I don't animation. like it. I hate I it. Like it. <laughs> I, I kind of like it. I like. I love the animation. I, I'm a sucker for stop motion animation. I know mine's a hot take, and it's an unpopular opinion. But yeah, I'm not a fan. I don't know why. No, I. I remember I had to go. I went on a date, and like I've only seen this movie in 3D because they were released it in 3D, Ooh. and it was just like a fucking disaster. I would not oh. see it in 3D, but I, I like the movie. Well, I'll continue. I, I'm sorry. No, I enjoyed it. It was my first time watching it. Like the uh, the the stop motion animation is fantastic. Um, the voice acting is great. The character designs and everything is so like gross and creepy without where, but not to the point where like I can see how why they released it for kids. Yeah, um, got catchy songs. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I think it's funny that they have two different voice actors for Jack. Yeah, I, I, it threw me off when I learned that. I was like, really? Yeah, yeah and Danny Elfman is the He's the singing, singing one. voice, isn't he? Yeah. 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 And, and he composes all the music, too, if I remember correctly. Yes. But Tim Burton did not direct it, which no, I thought he did. I, that this is a, a piece of trivia that Anthony and I have held on to all our lives. Henry Selleck, I think, is his name. The Who James also directed Peach guy? He also directed Monkey Bone. Yeah. Um, Alec, have you seen James and the Giant Peach? Because that's really good too. Like, if you like that animation style, it's really cool. Uh, no, I have not, but I do remember about that movie. Yeah, you should, you should definitely check it out because it's the same same style. Like, it took them like forever to make because they do all that shit by hand. It's just like unbelievable. Yeah, that's nuts. Like, absolutely nuts. I, has anybody seen that? I, Alec, I think you might have saw it. Did anybody see that Kubo and the Two Strings? Because that's another stop motion movie that came out a couple of years ago that people were crowing about. Uh, I did not, <laughs> but I think it was on Netflix for a long time. I haven't seen it on there, though, so I don't know if it still is. I need to watch that. I do believe it was on there for a while, but I have, I have not seen it. Um, uh, that's all I watched. Uh, right. Sean... Uh, I watched a couple things. I watched uh, Chinatown, and oh, oh yeah, you didn't. You were on the last week. Yeah. What, yeah. what did you think of Chinatown? 
Uh, well, Chinatown's like like an objective classic. Like it's hard to okay. give it like a regular score. Um, like it's a ten. Uh, if only for Jack Nicholson's excessive uh, fucking exuberance telling that Chinaman joke. It really, he really does. <laughs> he he really that. loves that joke. <laughs> and uh, he he's playing kind of like a not to like what you think of Jack Nicholson role in the movie, which I enjoy. Uh, but it is a little slow. It, and it's like a hard movie to recommend, I think, to people just like normal. Especially, especially by the time you get to the ending. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Like, if you if you didn't like Dog Tooth, you probably won't like Chinatown. <laughs> uh, I watched Dick Tracy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Like, yeah. I ended was, up kind of. I, I, I war- during the show, I warmed to that movie more than I thought. It's like I a would. seven for me. I think the art direction's a lot of fun. It. Like, it's crazy violent. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm shocked, like, at how violent that movie is. And it's just like, <clears throat> it's funny that they were still leaning on that. We have to put a kid because it's ostensibly a kid's movie, but it really in no way is a kid's movie. Well, I don't know if you, if you listen to the episode, but I, I'm no, still I convinced no. that. The fucking kid was like added after the fact. Like I think the no, kid they is didn't so post. Well, I think the kid is so inconsequential. Like they were like exactly what you just said. They that they made this super violent movie, and they're like, "Well, we got to market this to kids. We wanted this to be the new Batman." So they're like, "Fuck, we'll just put a kid in there." And that's why the only scene of any like real importance is that one scene in the boiler room with the fucking multicolored boiler. Hey, guys, can you price <laughs> one of those up for me? Uh, like, yeah, I got you. I got you on that multicolored boiler. Every pipe is a different shade. <laughs> From a um, safety perspective, that would be a nightmare. Oh, it's like, it's almost like the, the piping is like a wiring diagram. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. pipe goes here. Yeah, it's Completely inefficient. You'd have all sorts of back pressure issues, but we'll get into that. <laughs> well, of all they, of the faults. They did, that. too. I mean, the thing was, it was exploded. So, it's true. It's just anyway, a weird yeah. movie because it's filled with just straight up mutants, like which is not explained. Uh, which I mean, it, it would make a little bit more sense if everybody was a mutant. So it'd be yeah, like, oh, this is how people look, but only some of them are. Only the uh, bad guys. Only like, bad I'm, guys. I'm expected to root for a cop who like constantly abuses his power, but then turns out <laughs> to be right by doing so, which is yeah. a pretty hysterical that's the, thing. that's the right message, though. That's a troublesome yeah. message in 2020. No, it, the ends always justify the means. Also, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a movie that has a more filthy cunnilingus reference than the one Madonna <laughs> makes when uh, they're like, what kind of ice cream did you get? She's like, I got a sweet or a nice peach, but you better start eating it. It's starting to run or whatever. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, that. Jesus Christ. Like, she's so like this kid's movie that had Happy Meal toys. She is yeah. so wet. She's <laughs> dripping on his floor. Yeah. Like, also, it's like, like, she's it, like a sheer negligee. Yeah, like was it? <laughs> sixteen minutes into the film, and it's like oh she looked god. great, though. She looked oh my yeah. god. Yeah, was it, even, was it even legal to eat pussy in the forties? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty so sure we're gonna, gonna, we're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to take you in. You ate that. They're gonna drum you up with some charges. I, I thought the movie is a lot of fun. Like it's one of those like if you're gonna be bad, at least be insane kind of yeah. thing. Did you think it was funny that Danny Elfman just made the Batman score over again for the movie? Yeah, Danny Elfman's a piece of shit. Did you ever, did you know that the animated series they had their own theme song? But he found out that it was gonna be playing in prime time. He's like, I want some of that money. So oh, he was yeah, like, you have to use the movie theme. <laughs> Whatever, man. Dead Man's Party is a banger. <laughs> Yeah, Oingo Boingo rules, but like it's that's got that guy's had a weird uh, career. His like new album was pretty good, actually. Yeah. He's made like he made like a fucking industrial album with Trent Reznor. It's actually not bad. Yeah, but uh, Dick out. Tracy's a blast, man. Like I, uh, how good is yeah. Al Pacino? Oh, he's he's so much fun. And the movie has like a cat getting killed in the first five seconds, and woman beating all over the place, and <laughs> child abuse, and fucking yeah, like it's wild. Like straight up, like training day executions. Like the, the first five kids, minutes of the movie, the, the kid calls through. Dick Tracy gay, which is fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's like for for a tough guy, you sure knew a lot about sissy stuff or something like that. I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah, those are two very well, enjoyable montages set well, to Madonna songs. Of the movie is that Dick Tracy's gay, right? Like he's like gay for the law. Like he's no, like, yeah, yeah, he's just like yeah, he's just like a, <laughs> he's, he's like a gay for the law. Oh man, <laughs> there's a Mulholl movie production right there. 
Steven Seagal and gay for the law. Yeah. We'll talk about Steven Seagal while we talk about Halloween kills, but, um, Ooh, like, really? Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I, I, it, it's a movie that would not get made now, or if it did, it would be like substantially different. Oh yeah. But yeah, like, well, no, I, 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 I'm glad he picked that. Cause I had a blast. Like I, I don't remember much of the movie besides like the like glut of advertising and merchandise. Yeah. We've talked about that on the show. Like that, that movie got the blitzkrieg. Got a huge push. Yeah, huge yeah. push. Yeah. And I wanted one of those talking wristwatches so bad. Now that they actually have them, I'm like, these are yeah. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, anything yeah, else? Oh, and uh, lastly, I watched um, Dune. Oh, uh, that's ah. twice. That's table. Dune. Oh, is it? Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, gobbles. Uh, I watched five things. Jesus one of them. Nice. One of. Um, I'll be quick about it. Only well, two. At least two of them are tabled. So at least two of them are tabled. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, Dune and uh, Halloween 2018 are tabled. Um, I watched Halloween 3 Season of the Witch because... That movie slaps. movie bangs. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to watch Tom Atkins slither up a woman like a boa whole constrictor. Yeah, he, he ate a whole titty. He ate a whole titty. And that guy was just... Every time I watch it now, like I just like... I mean, He's just slugging back liquor like during the movie. I'm like, that has to be real. Those are full pours. And he's oh, yeah. Them. Movie at work the other day, and I still think the funniest thing about that movie is how that woman's going to get like uh, answers or revenge for her dead father and packs fucking lingerie. Yeah, and she she's didn't pack so anything. Horny. Like they made a point of saying, "Well, these clothes will last for another day." And the next thing, she's in a fucking teddy. I'm like, "Good lord, lady!" And your yeah. dad just died. Like, it, and you can't light a match around Tom Atkins. Uh, it's I like the fact that, and I love the fact that it's like sex symbol Tom Atkins. Oh like, my god! Like every woman is so damp for Tom Atkins in that movie. Like, well, every he's woman that meets him. He's such a coxman. He doesn't care what any woman looks like. He's like, I'm going to fuck, and that is it. Like, oh, I love it. It's so it's so good. So yeah, watch Halloween three. Uh, I watched uh, Hocus Pocus for the first time. Uh, you know, I'd never seen that movie. Kind of, yeah, I liked it. it was, you know, it's got a very prime Sarah Jessica Parker. I don't know if she's ever looked better. Does she so, have a prime? It's this. It, it is this. And I'm dead. This is a prime Sarah I, Jessica Parker. I saw a fun meme where it's like, those. I think I downloaded the wrong version of the movie, and it was Hocus Poke Us. And it was like a <laughs> porn version of it. And I was like, what a great title. <laughs> like, it's, you know, it's a kid's movie or whatever, but like, Bette Midler is, she's a talent, and she's a lot of fun in it. Um, and I also rewatched Cabin in the Woods, which I haven't uh, watched in a while, and still absolutely bangs. I love that movie. And oh, yeah. I think I always will. Um, I, it's a strong recommend for anyone who hasn't seen Cabin. I don't know who hasn't seen that at this point, but I do just fun little bit of Cabin in the Woods trivia. I remember when TJ and I were going to see it. Yeah. Right. We, we'd heard about like, cause the advertising. So this is a like, an interesting, it's very similar to, um, well, I guess like what I would say, like only murders in the building, right? Like if, if Alec hadn't recommended that show to me, I never would have watched it. I think this shows a trial. Um, I would have never seen Cabin in the Woods because the ads just didn't, the ads look terrible. They didn't. Looked, the, they, they did a terrible job. Well, I, I would also say that like the ads, like I'm reminded of a movie that I really like, You're Next, but I didn't yeah. see the movie because the trailer was so awful. And then like people were telling me, no, that movie's really good. And I'm like, it looks like a crappy, boring home invasion movie. John Wick. I had the same thing. The John Wick trailer was just like, I don't care. I don't even remember trailers for your next. All I remember are mall posters, like yeah, yeah, go, with the and mask. Have, yeah, the one yeah. sheet. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, then I eventually saw it, and I'm like, wow, that movie's great. Well, because you, with- you were telling me like the reviews are really good, and I was like, well, let's go check it out. And we went to the theater, and we're like blown away. We're like, oh my god, that was a ton of fun, and it, it was, was like, great. it was it was one of the it was one of the few times where my expectations not only were you know. Completely, I completely was changed on how when I walked out of the movie, I was like, "This is great," but it completely subverted everything. Anything yeah. I thought was going to happen, I was like, "Oh, this is something completely different." Like this is wild, and I love it. I don't think you've ever seen. There's been there really hasn't been a movie like that. I don't think in the horror genre. I'm also glad because there was rumblings that they were going to make a sequel, and it. I think that died. And it's like you can't God, have a sequel. Just leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, the world can't. fucking ends. At the end of that movie. Spoiler alert for Cabin in the Woods. The world ends. Yeah. Right? I mean, you it's, could do Space Cabin in the Woods. 
Oh, oh just shit. shuttle of yeah. Actually, another, now I, another, now I kind of another... like that idea. Yeah, another planet. <laughs> God damn it, Sean. Or it's like moon. Damn it, you son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> you did it again. Well, yeah, or like yeah, Jason, there's happening in the space. Or like Jason X. It's just <laughs> like a space. spaceship. Yeah, like Jay- this- and Jason X rocks. Jason well, yeah, X is a, lot a of ton fun. of fun. I love Jason, Jason X. Jason X my second favorite Friday the 13th movie. That movie is so extra. It's just, oh, I... I uh, Nano machines rebuild a psycho killer, and they give him a steely mask because it's apparently part of his DNA. It is like the like, most fucking like, early two thousands thing that fucking Jason designed with like the metal it's the mask. New, it's like, the new metalist movie of, of yeah. all the new metal horror movies that came out in that era. It is the new metalist movie. I'm shocked we never all. watched it on the show. And I've, yeah, the Cronenberg's in it. We uh, oh, that's right. Uh, of all the like, we've we've really. I feel like we've watched a ton of the new metal horror movies, and like well, that one that we haven't. We should probably just yet. do a Friday the Thirteenth month. We could. There's enough movies. <laughs> There's enough movies we could do a Friday the Thirteenth year. I know. There's a ton of them. Most we of them do. are very good. I will say though. I will. I will say that as far as franchises go. The the Friday Thirteenth movies are infinitely more watchable than the Halloween sequels. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, they are 100%. bad. Like like uh, Halloween. Even the Halloween, even the Friday Thirteenth remake is better than the Halloween. Not the Halloween twenty eighteen remake, but the Rob Zombie Halloween remake. Yes. Yeah. But oddly enough, it's, not Halloween two, which is like Hall- the weirdest. Halloween fucking movie. obviously is great, and Halloween three is good because it has nothing to do with the other movie. Right. Yeah. And that's it. That's, well, and Halloween 2018 is good. Didn't see it. It's good. Won't see it. Which one's the one with Bust Arrives? That's Halloween Angel's Resurrection. H2O. Oh yeah, or is it's it... one of the two. It's H two O or Resurrection. It might be both. I, I think H two O was the Josh Hartnett one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That's the H2O. only Halloween I had seen up until watching this one. Ooh, wow. well, you saw Halloween <laughs> three with us, right? No, I didn't. No, he that. wasn't I there. Think, I don't think he was on that show. Oh my god. Okay. Well, so you've never seen the original Halloween? No. Oh, that's great. You should watch that. That's classic. Well, you get the idea. Uh, all right. Anything Sick else? Boy, kill women. Dot com. All right. So we want to talk about <laughs> dot. <laughs> dot. Right, TJ, go. Uh, I, I, the what? Well, oh, so you're down to your tabled stuff? I'm down to my tabled thing, yes. Oh, everything I watched is tabled. I watched Dune and I watched uh, Halloween 2018. So we can, let's start talking about Dune. Uh, I fucking loved it. I thought it was everything. Like, I went into that movie. I couldn't have gone into that movie with higher expectations. And I think it exceeded those expectations. I've watched it twice. I will. I'm, I want to go see it in the theater. I'll probably go tomorrow. I don't know. Sometime this week. But I, I think it's a fucking masterpiece. I don't think you could have adapted the book any better. Um, and I'm pissed they didn't shoot the two parts at the same time because I'm mad I gotta wait two years for the next part but uh yeah, spoilers for the movie I guess but there's a time jump in the book and the movie kind of ends where the time jump is gonna start so there's gonna be a natural time jump with the actors and everything so it's kind of a clever clever thing that he decided to do but the book, I, the book I, time I, jump is what 10 years uh I thought it was five I don't remember it's funny because yeah. I'm reading the book and I don't remember. But I thought it was like I think, John. I thought it was Paul. I don't think it's. Going I think it's only ch- like two it, years. Yeah, I don't think it's that, that much. I thought it was that, Paul like, being a child to Paul being pork in age. Well, Paul's 15 when the book starts. So he? if he gets to like, like eight, 12. No, he's 15 when he gets to Arrakis. Okay. I I know this because again I'm currently rereading the fucking book, but okay. um yeah I think it's like two years. It's like two. It's something like that. Anyway, um I loved it though. I I. I think every decision that uh, Villeneuve, that's apparently, Gogs showed me an interview with him, and that's how you say his name, Denny Villeneuve. Denny uh, Villeneuve. I think every decision he made was the right one, like all his little changes that he decided to make. I think the scale of the movie is amazing. 100%. Like, to see, like, the book Dune is massive. And the, just to see on screen, like, the stuff that's described in the book, like, you see the Highliner uh spaceships which are these giant spaceships that literally transport like basically a planet sized fleet to another planet and you see it in the movie and it's like the biggest thing ever like I don't know I I loved it so much um yeah I I, I think again I don't have anything bad to say about it. I thought the casting was great. 
I thought the direction was great. I thought the music was great. I, everything. It's a 10. I fucking <laughs> loved it. Uh, Sean? Uh, it's big in a way movies aren't anymore. Like, it feels epic, like a David Lean movie almost. Like, they spend a lot of time shooting just exterior. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they do a good job with, like, sense of proportion. Like, when you're talking about those giant ships, like, he puts something else in the shot to give it the the size, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah he put puts something else looking. that you just saw that was gigantic in the shot, and it's minuscule compared to the new ship. I think they do, and, well, the one thing I did want to, I don't, they're not really related, but Vilnua and uh, Nolan get brought up together a lot. Uh, Vilna has a, a good handle on how to direct women's performances, which yeah. I don't think a lot of major blockbuster directors do, because I think Rebecca Ferguson almost steals the movie every time she's well, in it. Well, I think, like, and as, like, a character, Lady Jessica is, like, a really interesting character in the book, and I'm glad that, I'm glad that, that like, she's given so much to do in this movie. Like, I and yeah, I agree, well, like, Rebecca I mean, Ferguson is fantastic. She's a psychic karate nun. Yeah. Like... You know, how do you, and then I, I still love the Lynch movie, but like she's very stiff in that yeah. movie. And yeah, this, like, she feels younger. I mean, like, who doesn't want to fuck Oscar Isaac? So that's good. Right. Uh, I want to fuck him. It, it's tougher. I know TJ and I talked about this, and Gogs probably has the same. It's hard to tell, like, how you would react to this if you have, like, zero familiarity with the source material. So I but have. I think, I, think I have he a, a, look, a field report on that real okay. quick. So I Anthony he, Anthony saw the movie, and he yeah. never read the book, and he wasn't lost at all. He's like, "No, I totally." He's like, "I got it." He's like, "They." Yeah. He's like, "They don't." They, they they explain a lot through context, not a lot through exposition. He's like, "I never felt lost." He's like, "I understand yeah, what's going on." They do a really good job of um, kind of like unweirding the the source material. Like it feels like okay, this does. Everything makes sense in the world. Nothing's like, what the fuck is going on? Nobody's like floating around or like, it doesn't have that kind of like high camp that the other no, no. movie does. Definitely not. Uh, well, Baron Harkonnen does a little floating, but you even understand that through context. But, but, yeah, yeah, not like the not like fucking, in the movie. yeah. No, I don't know. Also, the, the, the choice to put the, uh, the, what do they call those things? The suspenser orbs. Like yeah. in the books, they're described as kind of being part of his clothes, but the idea to have it like sutured into his spine is like a cool, cool ass decision. Like I love that. Well, like it's also like it got some very on the nose messaging where he's taking a bath and a thing of oil. It's like yeah, no, we got it. Um, yeah, yeah. I like the the uh, worm rescue, the crawler rescue scene. Feels like it's from Black Hawk Down. Like I thought they did a really really good job with that because it's like you you understand that kind of like desert war imagery. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's super tense, and I loved it. Yeah. Um, shit, there was one more thing I wanted to say before I turn it over. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, fuck. Oh, they, uh, they, for some reason, they don't do this in the original movie, but they do in this one, is that they make the point that the Bene Gesserit have been seeding this myth on oh, yeah. Arrakis forever, so, like, it's not that Paul is legitimately like space Jesus. It's like they've been told for generations that this space Jesus that the Bene Gesserits are making is coming. Yeah, you know it's I mean? one I of the they're... yeah, it's one of the biggest points in the book. The Bene Gesserit are basically they're manipulating things. They've through their inception, like throughout history in the world of the book, they've they have they have they've always tried to mold society to their whims without people knowing it that's why people call them witches because they're kind of secretly kind of like kind of guiding society like without without making it too overt i forget what it's called they have a book that the the uh, protectica proxiva yeah. or something that they yeah, put on like every of... planet it's like a bible basically uh, but yeah. they actually have a bible in dune too and you see gurney halley reading it in uh in the uh, in the movie the oc bible which is kind of cool the orange Catholic, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um but no, I, I fucking love the movie. Like it's I was going to love it, but the Blade Runner had pumped my expectations way too high. And like I you can see the the pieces he's learned from making Blade Runner and from Absolute, Arrival, yeah. kinda Absolute, weirdly enough. Absolutely, yeah. Uh in this so now this is like it was gonna be a home run for me no matter what, but I'm glad like I wasn't disappointed. Uh, Gogs, what did you think of the movie? I mean, I absolutely fucking loved it. I wanted to, I almost watched it. I finished two and a half hours 
like that and then i just wanted to watch it again immediately like (laughs) it's it is it's everything you guys said like it's beautiful it's like it's it's this juxtaposition and i was texting tj about this like denny villeneuve's like i think his whole bit and maybe i'm just late to the party here is the juxtaposition of massive scale with small story like massive scale in arrival very small story massive scale in blade runner 2049 kind of a small story and then the massive scale the, just the off the chart like this is the biggest thing like the biggest world he's ever created uh or biggest world he's ever filmed because he didn't create it but and then just paired against this tiny intimate tale about this kid and his mom and trying to survive and like the in the palace intrigue like this movie does palace and like the first time I read Dune I was like oh George R R Martin just took all this from Dune okay cool. oh yeah definitely. like like Star Wars took things like everyone took everything from Dune like there's a Dune is so seminal like and Denny Villeneuve's like almost like slavish reverence reverence for the source material like comes through in like all the best ways possible he made I think because and T J watched this interview with him he's like kind of he's very humble about it he's like. I made some good decisions. I made some bad decisions. I don't know what bad decisions he made because I thought I loved everything that I saw yeah, in this movie. In that um, interview that you showed me too, I thought one of the the coolest things about it is like he he's talking about the the Nam Jabbar scene and, or Gam Jabbar scene, and there's a there's a shot where uh, the the Reverend Mother uses the voice on Paul, and he explains like what he wanted, and then he also but the first thing he does is credit his editor for like like a great screen transition and it's like it's nice to like hear a director that's not just like well that was mine that was all my shit he's like no he he right away credits his his editor and it's like this is just brilliant editing and i'm like yeah that's that's really nice to hear like i i don't know he yeah. seems like a very like humble is the right word he seems like a very humble man like i i really respect him even more after watching that interview so he's like the an- the anti christopher nolan <laughs> yeah, kind of. yeah probably <laughs> But yeah, I just, I don't know, I absolutely loved it. I'd never seen Timothy Chalamet in anything before, and he's just fucking amazing. Everyone's, there's not a bad performance in this, and Rebecca Ferguson is like, she does kind of steal every scene she's in, but Timothy Chalamet's just outstanding in it. Timothy fucking- Chalamet looks like a guy that like is like two uh, date rejections away from a school shooting. <laughs> he's, a little, he's got a little sad boy face, Tim- but no Timothy- one's going to reject that for a date. Timothy Sal- Chalamet, I, he has that... Uh- Tom, Tom, uh, what's the Spider-Man guy? What's Holland, his oh, Holland. Guy? Tom Holland. Like they're perpetually going to be seventeen their whole lives. Like, oh, well, <laughs> that, 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 one more thing. I'm sorry, Gogs, but uh, sure. they. I thought uh, I told TJ this that Timothy Chalamet comes across better as this like out yeah. of his depth, rich, smug prick, which well, works a- better for the, for the role than like Kyle McLaughlin, who like I think everybody wants to hang out with. Yeah, he's well, I like. I thought there was a like a nice like. I, I love the way Timothy Chalamet like was either directed to play it or played the role, and like uh, this will dovetail into my other point was that Jason Momoa was fantastic in this movie. Yeah, he's oh, really and there's good. like the, the, the like the scenes between the two of them, they have like such good chemistry. Like like when he sees Duncan getting off the jet, and they're like bantering, and like Duncan, like you can tell he's gonna like like Jason Momoa's character has to like toe the party line, but at the same time he d- he deeply cares for Paul and he like wants to give him good advice. And then it yeah, kind of gotta, bu- it buttons on that. Hey, you look like you got a little muscle. It's like really no, no. Yeah. <laughs> they got a good uh, Scooby Doo Scrappy Doo kind of dynamic. Yeah, yeah. I I really though I will say when he shaves his beard that is disturbing. Jason yeah. Momoa without a beard does not look right at all. Yeah. No, he's got like kind of a fat chin. <laughs> it's weird looking. Like I was like, what, what is going on with that guy's face? What's wrong with your face? What's wrong with your face? I also I I do love the fact that I'm glad Anthony followed the whole thing. Like I love. See, I kind of enjoyed like this is it's it's like fan service without being fans or without being so like spotlighted like the movie fanboys. But it's like you see Peter DeVries, they never say his name yeah, the entire movie. Yeah. He does. You don't know if you don't know who he is. You just know he's just some creepy guy. Yeah, but you don't know he, like his role. You, they don't. They don't think they say the word mentat. In they the never movie. say mentat in the movie. Well, they don't like, say. Don't, they definitely don't say jihad. Yeah, like they don't. You're know, like Fufir Hawat. Like his eyes roll back, and you're like what like if you don't yeah. know like it's but that's oh. real but but to i guess to well like what tj said by anthony everything is there in context like the story yeah. is 
there for you to understand. Like they don't, you don't need to go into what the navigators are with the spacing guild. All you need to know is spice is important. Whoever controls the spice can has a lot of power, and that the emperor, the Potashar Empire is emperor is not happy with House Arrakis, so they've set them a trap. And that's all you need to know. Yeah, I'm I also. Thought, glad. I did think it was kind of weird that Fade Ralpha doesn't appear in the movie. So yeah. I was talking to TJ about that, right? Yeah. He doesn't matter until after the time jump, anyway. He, he's kind of yeah. Gogs is right about that. Like you don't see Fade isn't real. Fade is slightly introduced before that, but like yeah, the the whole thing Fade with is him, the counter to counter to Beast Raban. So you like Fade is like the the false he's also savior, like the anti Paul. Yeah, he's the answer. Yeah, but I mean, like, the way, but even the Harkonnen's plan, it's yeah, yeah. Easter Bond's a piece of shit, and we're going to introduce Fade, and he's still a piece of shit, but he's less of a piece of shit. But they, like, yeah. don't even, like, Beast Raban is only talked about in the books. You never actually even see him, like, <laughs> so it, it is kind of, it was an interesting choice. Like, I don't, I don't hate it. It's, in, and I love, you know, I always like seeing Batista. Not enough um, tiny glasses. That's my only I will, complaint. I will say, though, that uh, one of the things you talk about that, well, I'll be done in a second, and we'll get into your other movie, but, uh, one of the things I, I do really like, uh, two things, about the visual changes that he made. He made the Harkonnens look, like, super weird, and they, they don't all just have, like, red hair. And I think that's kind of a cool, like, I like the idea that, like, they're just weird-looking humans. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, there's something visually immediately about that that's striking. I also well, like it's the not, fact... It's not garish in the way that the Harkonnens Lynch are in the is, 84 yeah. Dune. But I also like the fact that the Mintats, to show that they're Mintats, they just have this, like, blue, like, line on their lip. Whereas in the book, they're described as always having, like, blue stained lips because they're drinking this, like, Mintat juice all the time. The Sappho juice? Yeah, and I'm like, thank God. Because that was just... And they also... I, I think they, they always described as having, like, crazy eyebrows. And it's like, yeah, you could get rid of In the Lynch they definitely did. You can yeah. get rid of that. You don't need them to have, like, stained mouths and, like, crazy eyebrows. It's something that'll work in a book, but, like, seeing it on film, you're like, I don't and know. And the Mentat thing, that's another thing George R. R. Martin stole. Like, because those are sin- the-, the basters, effectively. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Mace- the masters are just like monks. Like well, the masters guess- are like the-, the keepers of all knowledge. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know. Of all the things that he stole, I don't know. I don't really. I don't know. No, if there's just a one of the one. things he stole. It's not the most grievous one. I mean, the stole. Iron Bank. If you want to get like big one, the Iron, yeah, bank, the Iron bank and is, Chome is yeah, like the same, the same thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, there's. We can prattle this on and on. Um, but yeah. Wait, Alex, did you watch it? No. Oh, okay. You made desire to watch it. I don't know. I'll probably watch it at some point. I think you'd like it. You like big epic sci-fi movies. I think you'd like it. I like Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> that is that is the most epic sci-fi movie. It is. It's I, I got a soft spot for that. It movie. actually kind of is. That's the funny thing. Like it is a pretty epic. Talk movie. about fucking dense. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we say that, 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 I think we looked up the wiki, that they had like an 800-page script that they were like, yeah. they wanted to shoot three movies, and they're like, now nah, you can only do one, and they're like, fuck it, and they just went ahead and did it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's great. All right, so then we got Halloween 2018, which was the oh, other Sean, you, movie. you were saying something before? Oh, sorry, Sean. Sorry. Oh, I, 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 well, I wanted to make sure that, like, if Alex saw it, they got a chance to talk as we just, like, fucking bust over the movie the whole time. But, uh, bust. Yeah. I, I'm, I might watch it again today. I, I, I really, really love the movie. I, <laughs> how good is Javier Bardem in the 10 minutes he's in the movie? Wonderful. He's great. Also, yeah. the fact that, like, they cast the Fremen as a bunch of, like, multicultural, like, mostly, like, dark skinned people makes sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah they live in a desert. They've lived in the desert for like hundreds of years. Like it makes sense. Like every know. casting choice was smart. Liet Kynes, the woman that played Liet Kynes, was wonderful. Zendaya, for the for as much she was pushed in the advertising, for the little that she's in this film, I don't know. They show her excellent. I, I, on my rewatch, they show her a lot in the movie. <laughs> like, well, they show her a lot in like dream sequence. Like, her yeah, speaking yeah. line, she only gets to speak like. The last what fifteen minutes of the movie. Also, if you uh, reading the book, like her description in the book is way closer to Zendaya than it is to Sean Young. So, yeah, I think I, Frank Herbert uses the term "elfin face" about seven thousand times. So. I can't believe Oscar Isaac's only a year older than I am. Like, do I look that old? Or like, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dude, I Oscar wish Isaac, like Oscar Isaac. Are you kidding me? Good lord! No, 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 no! I just like he looks like an older man. I don't know if it's just like the, the makeup salt or whatever. And beard, but, I think it's yeah. that beard. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Gogs, your next movie is Halloween 2018. 
Halloween 22, which I watched after Halloween Kills, which was, which was the, the worst thing to do. Order yeah. to watch it, I guess. Because you're um, like, you're, you're like, all oh, this shit, they fucked it up. Because you're like, what in the next movie they did this? In the next movie, it's like, yeah, they fucked it all up. Yeah, so Halloween Halloween 2018, pretty good. It's actually a lot more yeah. nuanced and like enjoyable, and it tells a it tells a complete story. Yeah, it should it have been over. It could have just it's, been they done. They should have just stopped. They should like, have just stopped. Jamie Lee Curtis really good in it. Like her whole dynamic with her family is interesting. Like the idea of this, like because this is the Halloween 2018 is a direct sequel to the original Halloween, not Halloween yeah. two. No, so oh, yeah, but if happen. they stopped, they wouldn't get the money. They wouldn't get the money. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. Well, also, like I looked up, I think this movie made like uh, like Halloween twenty eighteen. I think on like a twelve million dollar budget, made like a hundred and seventy million dollars. Yeah, because it's a Blumhouse movie. So yeah, I is mean, somebody it's... taking a piss? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I, that was supposed to be muted. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're getting demonetized. <laughs> you say you were making pasta. You're making your breakfast pasta. <laughs> you're just filling a pot. Anyway. Hey, uh, you frying chicken? <laughs> oh, you make a lot of noise when you pee. I like that. Um, so we're... <laughs> it doesn't go stealth. Um, that, that was just my review of the actual movie. <laughs> that was a review of Halloween Kills. No, Halloween 2018, like, a lot of fun... Uh, like the kills. So what's funny is, and we'll get into it when we talk about Halloween Kills. Like, same director, it turns out. Like yeah. Halloween, Halloween twenty eighteen. They do a lot more stuff, like with reaction shots. They do a lot more stuff, like off screen, where you just sort of hear it. Like they do a lot more. It's a lot more stalkery and creepy. It's a lot more like the original. Eerie. Yeah. yeah, and then the, the original is not is that just, gory. The second one is just like fucking. Karate Satan, like it just doesn't like. Yeah. I think don't about know. It, also, <laughs> the most think egregious. About I think one of the the most egregious things between the first one, 2018, and Halloween Kills is there's a great little little scene where uh, Lori's daughter and her two friends are talking, and they're talking about Michael Myers, and the one kid's like, "Some guy killed two people with a knife 40 years ago. That's not that big of a deal. That sh- shit like that happens all the time now," and like. That that line right there shows that like people have basically forgotten about him, and it's not that big a deal. And then in the the Halloween Kills, it's like he's been terrorizing the town for forty years. The whole like, town loses their. No, he kids. hasn't. Like he's been locked up for forty years. Nobody gives a he shit. Like dies tonight. It's it's so amazing that the same people made twenty eighteen as to made the Halloween. So Kills. watching Halloween Kills first, I'm blown away. I was like, oh, I guess Tommy must have been a part of the movie prior. No, like none of the characters. From Halloween Kills. Are we just getting into... We might yeah, let's just get into Halloween now. Kills. Fuck it. Go. Halloween um, Kills. Halloween oh, Kills. Oh, Halloween Kills sucks. It's it, so bad. Yeah. yeah. Like, hey, Alex, do you want to give the synopsis? I feel like I like the vitriol in just that first statement. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, he says. So. Jeez, what does the movie actually open with? Fire. Fire. Yeah, the, the house fire. Oh, uh, the house is on fire. With passionate uh, love. <laughs> is that a fucking James reference? <laughs> Jesus <Yeah>. Christ. <laughs> or does it start at the bar? No, it starts at the house fire. It, it doesn't start at the, tal- in the back of the, the truck. Doesn't it start a talent fire. show? Question mark. Yeah, yeah there's, a, that there's, a Hall- there's a Halloween talent show at a bar. <laughs> Which is stupid. Which is a thing that totally happens. Michael C. Hall just comes up and makes everybody feel bad. I guess his talent is just Um, making people sad. No, that's Anthony Michael Hall. Michael Michael C. Hall is from uh, fucking Dexter or whatever. Oh, that's, yeah, sorry. That would have been a much better person to be in this role. (laughs) Anthony Michael Hall sucks. Yeah, he sucks. Yeah, he's starting to look like Baron Harkonnen himself. (laughs) Isn't Anthony Anthony Michael Hall, wasn't he Soul Man? Was that him? No, that he was, was in all Thomas the Howell. fucking teen, God damn. All the teen movies. He was in fucking uh, he was in Weird Breakfast Science Club. and Breakfast Club. And he's also he was in the the Nolan trilogy. He's credited uh, on T's like a news reporter, and he's yeah. credited as Enigma. And people oh, are right. like losing oh, their that's shit. The Riddler. I mean, keep going, yeah. Alec. Yeah. Fire, fire, or talent show doesn't matter. So these things, I guess, are ca- happening concurrently. There's a there's a fire burning down the. 
Shit, what's the name, family name? Strode. The Strode. 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 Well, well, uh, pause real quick. That's the ending of of 2018. Like, yeah, late I didn't tra- realize that this was like a direct, direct sequel. So yeah. I hadn't seen the other one. So I was a little like, what? what? They they trap Michael Myers. Like, basically, Laurie Strode sets up like a straw dog's house and fucking <laughs> traps Michael Myers in the house. And it's actually kind of cool. It's a cool it scene. Cool. Like. Like she, she like locks him in this basement. She has like these like reinforced iron bars. Then she turns on all these like, uh, like the gas uh, jets, blow with torches. You. Yeah, base it, like improvised blow torches, and the house burns down. And that's how the movie ends. So that that that's where this starts off. Like in the same night. So this night is like thirty five hours long. I guess I don't know. It's a very long night. Yeah. So Lori Strode and her daughter and her granddaughter are on the way to the hospital in the back of a flatbed rack truck um and she sees the ambulances and fire department going to put out the fire as you fire (laughs) the fire department gets there yeah she should have left a note (laughs) (laughs) i guess she didn't think that far ahead um, so do, you, like, do not resuscitate for a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a controlled burn. That's fucking hilarious. It's, like, um, it's just like a. She, it's had like a this, she had this master plan and she didn't leave a note. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's it. really okay, So the first firefighters on the scene go into the house. They find Michael, or one falls through the floor, lands in the basement with Michael Myers, who obliterates him. Oh yeah, with his axe thing, I I, I kind of like this part. Like honestly, I thought that was kind of cool. Well, the gory gags are all say this pretty right good. Now, I think all the kills in Halloween Kills are fun, but but it that's... feels like they're making a Friday the Thirteenth movie. Correct. At points. Yes. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, he gets out of the burning house, and then the firefighters left like six or eight or whatever firefighters left come at him one at a time with their firefighting weapons <laughs> one uses the fire hose on him which he just takes yeah the, the, the way so physics stupid. work in michael myers's orbit is very curious well maybe he's like fortune from metal gear solid 2 <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but like later in the movie, Judy Greer, who weighs all of 108 pounds, stabs him with a pitchfork and totally knocks him over. So, yeah. Eh. Right. yeah, but a fire hose, which could like go through a wall. Yeah. Just, yeah. he just takes it. Yeah. Ask, ask black folk in the 60s how that works out. Also, this is a 60 some year old man with like smoke inhalation. Like, it, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Yeah, he like I know he's kills, a brick shit house, but like goddamn, he kills some of them with axes, some of them with whatever. He kills one with the jaws of life or something. Um, yeah, but he, yeah. he he kills all the first responders, uh, just like nine eleven. Well, it was funny. Somebody later and goes, uh, he killed eleven people, all first responders, and I was like, well, that's pretty based. <laughs> <laughs> also, like. I mean, I think like my first when I when I first watched this movie, my first sense of oh god, this is gonna be so fucking stupid. Like, why would the firefighters like stay and fight him? Like, th- wouldn't they get well, the fuck out of there? Well, technically, if he is somewhat on fire, they're duty bound as firefighters. <laughs> Are they gonna fight the fire? <laughs> they thought he was the fire. <laughs> Well, she didn't leave a note. What were they supposed to oh do? My God, there should have been a line where it's like, that's the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop oh. it. Now we need to make a movie about firefighters that are martial artists. They have to, like, fight fire monsters, fire ninjas. No, it. they're just firefighters that, like, are all hyper-literal, like Draxes. <laughs> they literally uh, go and try to kick and punch the fire. <laughs> Oh, they lose God. so oh. many people during training because they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's pretty good. All right, sorry. Al. Um, I mean, there's not a whole hell of a lot to this movie. No. After after this, well, we find out through some kind of news report that there was a a van crashed 
Yeah, that also was, happened in the first movie. And mm-hmm. there's, like, Michael Myers is one of the escapees, but there's also another guy who's not Michael Myers, who's just a sad, crazy guy who escapes. Who's also, like, three feet shorter than Michael Myers, and not even close to the same body type, but more about that later in the movie. Yeah. Um, so basically, Anthony Michael Hall finds out about that, that Michael Myers escaped. Oh, they get a push notification on their phones. That Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke. Well, they're they're they all got, in the like, bar and they get a push notification yeah, that Michael got, Myers is on the loose. The local cuckoo bananas house uh, enables push notifications. Um, Anthony Michael Hall decides that they're gonna they're gonna posse up and uh, take him out. Yeah, and their Once posse and consists all. of like seventy-year-old women. Oh, and their like... posse sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, their posse's like everybody in the town, right? It's like the whole, yeah, the yeah. Whole most village. of the town. Yeah, yeah, it's Frankenstein. Um, yeah, uh, it's a real January six situation. <laughs> pretty much, they go to they go to take the hospital. Yeah. Um. Because they're all convinced Michael's going there to get there's like yeah. there's like fifteen scenes of them rioting in the hospital spread out over an hour, which are all just boring. Mm-hmm. Evil dies tonight. Yeah, evil dies that's tonight. Tonight, pickles will prevail. <laughs> Every time I heard that in the movie, that's all I could think of. Pickles will prevail. <sighs> um, we get the other crazy, the other uh, mental patient makes his way to the hospital, I guess, because he's injured. They see yeah. him, and they think that it's Michael Myers, even though, as I think TJ already said, yeah. clearly this guy is... He's like, not even close. This guy's, like, like, shorter than any of us. Yeah, and he's, like, And he's, fat. like, a short, fat guy. <laughs> like, how do you mistake him for the man mountain that's been hunting your town? Yeah, Michael Myers looks like fucking Kevin <laughs> Nash. Like, how the fuck... Like, it's, like, it's, like, it's crazy. Also... Uh, Alec, you forgot that to talk. I know why you forgot because she's barely in the movie. But Laurie Strode is like in this hospital, and this is where she will remain for the she's remainder the of the, the this entire is, movie. This is where I wanted to bring up Steven Seagal really quick because apparently Jamie Lee Curtis has that same contract. Like, I'll be in your dumbass movie, but I'm not going to stand or walk or anything. <laughs> yeah, right. God damn, she doesn't. So they they marketed this movie as like Laurie versus Michael. And she's not in the movie, like, at all. Like, she's in the movie for, like, five minutes. There's a scene where two of them refuse to get up, and it's, like, some old man and her just laying in a bed. It's the cop from the first movie. It's chick from fucking, uh, what's the space meteor movie? Armageddon. Yeah. Also the racist coach from uh, Remember the Titans that turns not racist. Yeah. I love it when racists turn not racist. <laughs> well, I don't think he was racist in the movie, but he was the white coach who had to uh, take a back seat to uh, Coach to Boone. Left. Yeah, well, he, he's probably kind of racist, though. Probably. I mean, assume. I'm assuming he's from it's Virginia, Virginia in, in the, the 70s. 70s or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's probably racist. Um, he wouldn't admit it, though. No. Some so, of his best friends. Judy Greer, Lori Strode's daughter. <laughs> Judy Greer and Lori realize that the person they're chasing is not Michael Myers. They're the only people in this whole fucking mob that realize that. <laughs> and this mob is like hundreds of people. Yeah. Um, it is Judy a Greer, suit pitchfork mob. <laughs> like, so yeah. dumb. Yeah. Like somebody said from Frankenstein. It's like from the original Frankenstein yeah. Oh, yeah. movie. Yeah, like it's, they got like torches and pitchforks. And, yeah. In a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> um, they Is chase this the, guy to the top the former, floor, and then he dies. He jumps out the window instead and, of instead of getting lynched. Yeah, he jumps out the window, and the the gore effect when he hits the ground is fucking disgusting. It's they, brutal. They did a really good job on that. Effect. Whoever did the effects in this, great job. I, I, at hats at what point does the former disgraced sheriff of Milwaukee show up for no reason? <laughs> oh yeah. 
<laughs> you know, he's 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 trying to he's actually trying to calm the mob down. He's talking about the point. black guy in the cowboy hat. And he gets hat? his yeah. cowboy hat stomped and then he gets he's in the, a sad like, boy. It's so weird because he's in the first one and he's kind of a big deal in the first movie. And then again in this one, he's just like, I, why are you even here? Oh, OK, because like, like, again, I didn't see the first movie. So he just like shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, you should watch the first one. It's good. No, uh, I'm good. I think, well, I, I it's, it's a solid movie. <laughs> I think Much 11 Halloweens this. is enough. So yeah, so that guy goes splat. Yeah, and he goes they real- splat. Yeah. They realize that it wasn't Michael. <laughs> um, while all this is going on, some of the people from the bar have gone on their own hunt for Michael. Yeah, and they're like <laughs> Mercury Mountaineer. Nice. And this um, old woman who's never shot a gun before has this like impossibly huge gun, if I remember correctly. Yes. Oh, she get that when she goes. That's a great scene. I did enjoy the shit out of that. Oh, I so, think we forgot to mention whatever for whatever reason Lenny Clark is in this movie to distract me from whatever else I was doing and gets murdered in ten seconds for no reason. Who's Lenny Clark? He's the guy and his wife, or the wife has the drone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. whole scene that just feels like it's like a for a sizzle reel or something that has yeah, nothing yeah. to do with the rest of the movie. <laughs> oh yeah. And we haven't even gotten to the gay couple just yet. for the sake of him getting killed. Yeah, or them was, getting killed. Oh, yeah. You know, there's, let me do it. That guy. Big John, yeah. little John. Big John, the little guy John. From, Michael the guy, McDonald. The one, yeah, the one guy from McDonald. Mad TV. Yeah. 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 Stuart. Yeah. Yes, that's he is Stuart. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, the, the, one, the one group, the one crew consisting of a couple that doesn't seem that involved in any of this, um, an old lady, two, actually... One severely old lady and just another <laughs> old lady. So yeah, one's the, like so in her, one's conscience. in her like seventies and one's in her probably like mid forties. So there's this couple that's just got dragged into the one. The old old lady is <laughs> uh, the nurse that Michael attacked in the first movie who survived. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then poetry. the old regular old lady. And when God says the first our movie, age, when God says the first movie in this context, he means the 1978, 1978 movie. Yeah. It was the little girl that was also being babysat with Tommy in the original 1978 film. So dumb. So fucking dumb. Um and then Michael so, just slaughters all of them. He stabs a guy through the eye with a knife. I like that kill. He, I forget how he kills the old, old lady. Does he just break her neck or something? I don't remember now. I can't remember. She's, and then she tries to shoot him in the most hilarious way as possible. Like, oh, he's she's standing, literally just like flailing around, just firing, firing randomly. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, I think, doesn't black she shoot lady the girlfriend? Has, I think she shoots no, the no, girlfriend. She... Like, Michael does like an impossible, he like smacks the gun out of her hand. But instead of it falling, it flips around and she shoots herself. No, he that's hits the it. he hits yes, the car it. door. The car door makes the gun brain herself. Like and she blows her skull apart. Come on! It was <laughs> <laughs> right before this. Right before this, Michael Myers killed a bunch of kids and the younger old lady. And just for uh, for context, somehow slapped all of the Halloween three. Season yeah. of witch masks on them, yeah. and I just want to bring this point up because it's a weird, it's a weird like Mobius strip continuity loop. In Halloween Three, Season of the Witch, they're watching 1978's Halloween as if that is fiction in their universe. Yet in this universe, which is that universe, they're wearing these masks from the reality universe in the fiction universe. Oh, fuck, <laughs> it's very weird. And Too much. Continue. So the, to, now do we get to the gay house? I think that happens next. No, the gay house actually first showed up earlier because the kids oh. were at the gay house and then the kids ended up at this scene with the car. Yeah, that's right. Those kids are actually in the 2018 version too. They show up for a minute. It's I don't again I, why they felt the need to carry on that continuity, I don't know. So the kids showed up at this house where it's uh, a gay couple. Uh, Michael McDonald and I forget who the other one the other, guy's been, the other guy, the other guy, he's been in stuff, but they're Michael they're, McDonald is wearing so much makeup in this movie; it's <laughs> fucking distracting. He looks like he looks like he's in like a silent film, <laughs> like he's or, or he looks like. Remember when the, the was it Energizer where they had those like plastic people in the commercials? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
but it was uh, their names are Big John and Little John, which the little guy is named Big John and the big guy yeah. is named Little John. So it's they hilarious. They should have gotten the rapper Little John. That would have made the movie. Yeah. yeah. I'm about to die. Yeah. yeah. Um, the kids at first torment them. They knock on the door and they tell the one girl is faking that she uh, ate a razor blade. So they'll leave the door open to help her, and another kid goes in and steals all their candy in the most convoluted, like, candy thieving scheme I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> on a night where candy is free, might I add. Yeah, yeah, candy yeah, is get candy anywhere. Um, later on, they hear another knock. At the uh, Big John and Little John hear another knock on the door. Go to check it. There's nobody there. Then they realize they left the back door unlocked, and it's open, yeah. and there's a bloody... Well, they would. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and there's a bloody there's a bloody handprint, and Little John says, "Big John, there's somebody in the house, and it's not this a kid." Is so fucking stupid. This is the dumbest shit. Yeah, it's like, and then they and then both go hunting Michael Myers in their yeah, house. They lock the doors, and they're like, "We're gonna fuck this guy up." It's like, what? Who would do this? Also, they are unaware of the whole Michael Myers thing. They just no, think they're aware of Michael Myers. I don't they think they are. Well, they're, they are. They're they're told the whole, that he's they told loose. the whole story about it. Right. They know the lore. They un- they're unaware that he is loose this evening. That's, that's what I mean. Loose. Okay. They know who he is, but I, they don't know that like it's potentially him in their house. I guess they, they, weren't also, the, they weren't on the next door app, so they didn't well, they get a push uh, notification. And also, we, we they <laughs> live in Michael Myers' house. Correct. They bought it. They like gentrified Michael Myers' murder house. <laughs> oh, is that what this is about? I think so. <laughs> um, but yeah, they have like the dumbest decision of, of any person ever. Like, if there's an intruder in your house. Don't lock all your doors and decide to go after them. With you in the behind those doors. Also, no guns. Nobody it, like it, like how do you like in these rural towns? Like everybody's got guns. Like you see some guns later, but like. Why don't they have any guns? Like, well, yeah, they go after him with a golf club and a yeah. kitchen knife. Um, Big John gets stabbed in the armpit, and oh, then oh yeah, that looked awful. His eyes poked out, and then his the thumbs. I'm, I'm assuming go directly into his brain because his head oh yeah, he gets Roy he looks like a play he gets Roy it looks like a yeah. extruder. It like it just squishes <laughs> out. <laughs> um, and then I forget what how the other one dies. Oh, well, he just screams to it's death. Not, it's not. Oh, I guess off camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh. It's not as memorable, but he gets he gets got to. And then um, you, you see them later, just piled up on the floor, hugging and just death. Yeah, because we end up, we end up going back to this house later. Oh, um, do we? Because Judy Greer's character shows up there. Judy uh, Greer is, her, is, is her Lori's daughter. daughter. Is, yeah, she's Lori's daughter, and Judy Greer's daughter has joined the posse. With her boyfriend and her boyfriend's dad, who I'm assuming it has some connection to the other movies. No, no. it seemed like he's, oh, he's not okay. in it at all. <laughs> the boyfriend is Lon- the boy- Lonnie. The so here's something else is in it. Go ahead, guys. Well, here's here's something else we haven't brought up yet, but I'll just fill you in, Alec. the The cop who we keep having flashbacks to that night when he was a young cop, that also never showed up in any previous version. That wasn't in 1978. That's just completely tacked on in this. So they've just they're just trying to pull they're trying to just just pad out the bench with just people that might have been alive in nineteen seventy eight. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um Lonnie decides he's gonna go in. He immediately gets killed and like halfway cut in half in like an attic, the pull downstairs yeah. thing. Yeah, yep. it was awesome. <laughs> his son goes after him. His son gets just pretty much bludgeoned to death. I yeah, love that gets, kill. That's my favorite fucking, kill in the movie. He gets fucking high tension. Like that scene in high tension where they take the fucking like bookshelf and like yeah. bust his head off. That's the same like same idea. Yeah, he gets roughed up and then uh oh. Also, like, how much in the- better would this have been if it it was the ending of High Tension and it just turned out it was Judy Greer was killing everybody the whole so, time? So, so here's the thing: the 2018 version ends on a weird shot of the do- the granddaughter holding the murder knife, like, yeah. and it's a long, drawn out shot. So you're like, are they trying to say that she's going to like become the murderer next? So you're on to something there. At least that's something, right? Like that's <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
Um, the daughter, Judy Greer's daughter, falls down the stairs and breaks her like foot or ankle or something. Yeah, it's, it's uh, awesome. Michael course. stalks down the stairs, stops for a minute to break the kid's neck, <laughs> even though he's already like, like stop, yeah, he was, he's already dead. He was already thorough. Up. Yeah. But he stops to break his neck and twist his head pretty much off. <laughs> <clears throat> keeps going down the stairs, is about to kill Judy Greer's daughter. Judy Greer stabs him, pops up out of nowhere and stabs him with a pitchfork. Yeah, uh, the, but then uh, just aforementioned, the aforementioned pitchfork. Which just um, leaves him there, doesn't like follow up with a, another stab well, or anything. She gives him like well, an no, orange she takes, she, she gives she, him like an orange Cassidy level kick in the face too. Uh, which <laughs> seems to stun him. She takes his mask off and leads him to the posse. Correct. Yeah, this because is, she had set this up with the posse already. So dumb. As if the movie didn't suck already. I feel like this is where they just ruined Michael Myers as a character. It's like the the guy is the mask. When you take it off, and I just see it's just some dude. Like but I that's get also, that it's some dude, but I but, I don't know. This is where it's like, okay, well, wait a minute. Now he's just some regular dude. You visually established that. So like, is he also supernatural? Like, what the fuck is going on? Well, they even they I mean supposedly they show his face. On the news report, when they announced the escaped prisoners, they just never show the audience. Like the audience never sees his whole face. In, and his he does have his mask on for a good chunk of the, the movie prior to this. We're supposed to not have to see his face, which well, makes I the mean, fact that they killed the little dumpy crazy guy even funnier because they yeah, know what true. Michael Myers looks like. Yeah, that's even. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, he gets led back to the posse just because he wants his mask. And they proceed to fuck him up for like ten minutes. Yeah, Judy, and including Judy, getting shot like three times. Yep. Yeah. Stabbed, shot, electrocuted. Were you guys like watching? Go. Well, why don't they just run over his head with the truck? Like you've why got they other shoot shit him in the brain. Just, why don't, like, they, why yeah. don't they run up and shoot him in the fucking head? Like it's so. It's they so did him like they did him like they did Jimmy King and Ready to Rumble. Also. Again, not that it matters, but in 2018, uh, he's already lost three of his fingers. He's shot at least three times in the first movie, so it's just like it's even more ridiculous. Like it just, it just keeps adding. Like, I don't, to the, but it's again like they, their like rules aren't established. Like, what is his relation to bullets? Because sometimes they seem to slow him down. Sometimes he just walks straight through them. Sometimes they incapacitate him. Like what? Like, what exactly is his power set? It just seems, like, context-dependent. Well, the funny it's thing is, is the movie the movie is about over, because the movie is, like, they, they fucking no country for old men it, where they fucking, <laughs> they fucking, they fucking, they cut, they intercut this mob beating with Jamie Lee Curtis going into this stupid, like, monologue about how, like, he's, like, evil personified, and he gets stronger after every kill, so, like, are they trying to say he's supernatural or not? Like, I don't understand. Well, I mean, he would have to be supernatural, right? Like... Well, yeah, I guess, at this point. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and then it but just kind of ends. But then, after, well, we, well, go, no, we go back, we go to, back Judy, to the house Judy again. Judy taking care of her daughter. Oh, She's yeah. talking to her daughter, nursing over her while Jamie Lee Curtis is talking. Then we see Michael Myers, after being shot and stabbed and beaten, he kills the entire mob. Um, And the last shot we see is him killing Judy Greer in the house. Yes. Somehow, For some reason. Got- yeah. He kills them all in that, like, Mortal Kombat extreme move dimension where everything just kind of, like, turns black except for the two people that are in the frame. Yeah, it's the, it's the NFL Blitz, uh, the league bone breaker moves. I missed that game. Man, they need to make another one of those. But yeah, that's the fucking movie. That's and it. Gear up for Halloween, whatever the next one's going to be called. They, oh, they're going to make another one. Piece of shit. Well, Stuart, Go- his name's Stuart Gordon Green, right? That's his name. The guy, David. Is- Stuart David. Gordon Stuart is the guy Gordon that made a- fucking Puppet Master <laughs> and Reanimator, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, David Gordon Green. So he claims that they envisioned this as a trilogy. To which I say, you are full of shit. Like, I it, and I feel like they didn't know what to do. They might have an ending for this, but they didn't know what to do with this fucking movie. This should like, have been a one well, a G. Like this should have been one yeah, movie. A one a G. The new the new cinematic term. A one a G. A unity. There you go. Feel better. 
I think besides the fact that this looks like cheap as fuck and it looks like a TV show. Well, it's like, Blumhouse, though. So you know. One of the big problems with this movie is it's like it's a message movie, sort of. Yep. Like, it's like, uh, I think I put it on Facebook, but it's like, oh, mob justice won't work, so we gotta kill Michael Myers with incremental change. It's like some, like, dipshit liberal <laughs> Hollywood asshole wrote this. <laughs> like, because if the timeline kind of looks, if you look at when they wrote the other movie and then when they would have written this movie, because I guess they wrote either at the same time or right after, it was during all the BLM protests. Sure, which, sure. It's like, is that what they're saying? Like, the, the original yeah. Halloween is not a message movie. It's just about some big freak that kills people. Like, that's it. You don't need to that's follow what the, up on it. That's what the, the 2018 is, too. 2018 yeah. is very similar to the original. If 2018 is anything, it's about dealing with trauma. It's not yeah. like... <laughs> it's definitely mama it. trauma. Save, you the, save the trauma for your mom. Because um, uh, there's actually... A- 2018 actually is a really interesting sub... Like... Uh, so this makes twenty. I'm just gonna say this. This makes Halloween Kills even worse. Oh yeah. Definitely. 2018 has this really sort of interesting subplot about how fucked up Laurie Strode is over this, and the fact that she kind of John Connored her daughter into being like the anti Michael killing machine, and then yeah. when push comes to shove, she doesn't deliver. Like well, that's like, not fucking, true. Like she fucking they have that. There's that great scene in 2018 where she's like freaking out. She's like, I can't no, do no, this. No, 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 no. In 2018, yes. Oh, in, oh, in oh, Halloween sorry. Kills. Sorry, you're she right. should have been like, like she should have been like fucking uh, Trinity in the Matrix, just yeah. fucking him up. Well, yeah. Also, like I, I forget who I think TJ brought it up or something or whoever did, where it's like. Everybody in this town has like developed this deep psychosis about a stabbing that happened 40 years ago. Like we all grew up in or around Baltimore, and it's like yeah. Yeah, it's people get stabbed and shot all the fucking time. Someone's gonna yeah, get stabbed like, today, baby. Yeah, like well, it's just nobody... like it's a, it's what they established in the last movie. A character fucking says it out loud. Like that's not that big of a deal. And like in this movie, it's like no, everything is a big deal. Like. Now, if Michael Myers had, like, turned the town into, like, a silent hill or something, like, okay, that makes more sense. But, like, what the fuck are these people doing that it's just, it's, like, destroyed the entire town. Like, like a nuclear holocaust had happened there, you know what I mean? Like, like Fukushima is doing better psychically than Haddonfield, Illinois at this point. Yeah, right? Yeah, but they uh, still have Halloween night talent shows. Why, right. why have Halloween at all? Why would they ban <laughs> Halloween? Like, you think that'd be the one night where they're yeah. just like, it'd be like the purge. Like, everyone just goes in their house. Locks yeah, what up. they should have done was they should have made it like Footloose, but for Halloween. And then the new kid <laughs> comes to town and brings Halloween back. And that brings Michael Myers back and gets everybody I killed. That I love idea. that idea, actually. That's a good one. You, 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 Sean, why don't you write movies? Why don't you write movies? Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 like Michael Myers just uh, sitting I, in I got, the prison. I got kicked he out sees of Hollywood the Halloween because... back on the menu. He's like, All right. he cracks his neck yeah. twice and then yeah, punches got... out the wall. And then that's yeah. it. I got kicked out of the Hollywood Writers Guild because my scripts were too gay. (laughs) Um, Uh, All right, let's get into Five Knuckle Shuffles. I have a feeling I know what everybody's scores is going to (laughs) be. Alec. One. Spicy. This movie sucks. This movie, it's boring. Like, it's oppressively boring. It is. Um, Like... I don't give a half a fuck about any character in this movie. Yeah. Like, and, it, and at that point, you would think that would make, like, the kills fun. And a couple of them are, but overall, yeah. it still just sucks. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, go ahead and kill them all. Kill the whole town. <laughs> I don't like any of these people. I <laughs> don't give a shit. It's crazy how, like, pretty much unlikable they made everybody but still expect you to care about I, I don't know monster I'm ca- going around killing them all I'm kind of into your idea of Michael Myers murder senses where he just literally has to kill everybody in <laughs> he the, the door with a clip <laughs> like, like a clipboard yeah. Um, yeah this movie sucks the performances aren't good by anybody like nope it's a Halloween movie, so I get that like it's at night and it's gonna be really dark. But there are scenes that like I can't even tell what Michael's doing. Yeah, yeah. It's like why even shoot that scene and show him? Because you can't see what the fuck he's trying to do anyway. Um. 
yeah, this movie sucks, and it makes me hate all Halloween movies. <laughs> even even Resurrection, which was the best one. Back up in your ass with the Resurrection. I love the fact that um, you've only seen two of the movies, so by, like, actual, absolute logic, Halloween Resurrection is the best of the Halloween movies, as far as you know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the hottest take. Because that's the one with, uh, it's like they're filming a reality show. It's a reality show, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they're filming a reality show, like, in the Myers house. At least it's something. <laughs> it is something. Yeah. Um, it's got sexy-ass Katie Sackhoff in it. She makes me whack off. There we go. Mm-hmm. All of that for that setup for that joke. <laughs> um, Sean, uh, it's a it's also a one for me. Like the, I appreciate that they did like all that work for the kills, but eventually, because you don't care about anything, it's like playing Manhunt or something, where it's just like <laughs> this like excessive violence. It's like playing the to... second half of Manhunt, which just yeah. doesn't matter anymore. Another game that they need to redo. I would um, love to play Manhunt. This movie, besides the fact that, like, again, I know Alec just said it, and I said it before, it looks incredibly cheap, although they spent, like, $30 million on it. Like, bro, buy a light. Um, it has that cardinal sin of we're doing shit just because it's in the other movie to, like, yeah. the point where Michael Myers is credited as the shape, even though it's the 12th movie in the series, and they say Michael 35 times in the first, like, yeah, 10 minutes. That's, that's ridiculous. Uh, it, it, it's like unwatchable, man. Like I just, I like I know, you know, no movies need to be made, but this really didn't need to be made. Like, couldn't they have just like spent thirty million dollars on scratch off tickets and ended up in roughly the same place and saved us all <laughs> fucking two hours? Like, I just Blumhouse is just a fucking nightmare factory. Like, I can't. Besides, uh, I, I guess they made a uh, they made upgrade uh, upgrade sort of they made like, some good but, stuff. Yeah, but a lot of it's like this, and somebody brought up the new metal horror movies. Like, the Blumhouse is the new metal horror movie, yeah. the Dimension films or whatever yeah. of our era. Like that, like, Paradise, era. that, like, uh, Paradise, our Fantasy Island horror movie that came out last year, and, like, yeah. uh, what was the one where everybody had, like, the weird, like, smiley face? It was, like, Truth or Dare or something. Like, yeah, or the house that October built, brought to you by the Insidious Four, and, like, I just, I can't, man. Like, it's just fucking brutal. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we're back to our uh, fucking modus operandi of watching like absolute fucking <laughs> vapid trash after watching like two enjoyable movies. Yeah, I had to. I had this. The, the universe needed to be centered. So, TJ, how much did your score go down on your second viewing? I mean, it was already low. It couldn't have gone any lower. Uh, it's a it's a one. I I'm only giving it a one because the gore effects are so well done. But it, it's like it again, Sean. You really hit the nail on the head there. This movie just shouldn't have been made. It shouldn't have existed. And like, I don't. I really am confused by the marketing of this movie. Like, it's like, oh, it's going to be a showdown between Laurie and Michael. It's like, yeah, they've done that before. But like, you don't get that in this movie at all. And it feels like it, it feels like the fucking underpants gnome thing, right? Like, it's like, okay, Plan One is 2018, and then blank. Then Lori Michael showdown in three. It's like what? What do we do in the second part? I don't it know. feels like like compared to the ad push for this movie, it's like a bait and switch. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the ad yeah. push is all just Lori Strode talking about how evil dies tonight. Like the Halloween card subject to change. Yeah, yeah it's fucking weird, <laughs> and like it just seems like it's frustrating because I really like 2018. 2018 is is like it looks like a movie that oh these guys understand. I mean, again, it's not like it's not reinventing the wheel, but it's like a nice classic slasher movie. And it's like, okay, they get it. They understand what what Halloween is and why it works. And then you watch this and you're like, no, I guess they don't. Like, I don't I I, I can't I can't think of a of a movie like a sequel to something that totally just like made by the same people too that just totally betray everything you set up in the first movie. Did like you not see the new Star Wars trilogy? Well, yeah, I guess yeah that that would be the one that sticks out. But I, I but yeah, it's it's crazy. It, yeah, I, I guess the Last Jedi to the Force Awakens is a good comparison. Um, but uh, yeah, this movie sucks. It's a one. Uh, Gogs. Yeah, it's also a one. I almost gave it a two because I like some of the kills, but it's just it's unnecessary. It's filler. It's not as bad as. Land Shark, but this is barely a movie. This is a movie, maybe it's a movie in the sense that it. I guess there's 
Well, it's it not feels, even a beginning, a middle, it or an feels end. Like the it's season finale to a bad television show. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, but it's, it's all the, middle. You're right, though. It's, it's all, all middle, and the ending is is the fucking middle too, because like it's just really like nothing has been gained. Like yeah, Michael's you, still by like the end of the movie. You could still be at the end of Halloween 2018. Yeah, all absolutely. the stakes are exactly the same. Nothing has really changed. No. Like and, and a bunch of characters that you didn't know about or care about died. I mean, except you for do entire, Judy Greer is the only can, important character that dies. You do this entire movie in a dropped line. You yes. do this entire movie where they get <laughs> where they get to the hospital to Lori and go, Lori, he didn't die. And then she's like, Wah. And then I would have gave it a out, ten if that was the whole movie. Like and then but I'm saying, but then you find out that he's killed all these people over the course of the evening. And then Lori has his final sh- her final showdown. Yeah, this movie could have been told in montage, like a hundred percent. It doesn't need to be a yeah. montage. Wait, wait, hang on, wait a minute. Does this movie take place on Halloween? Then yeah, still same night yeah, as the first movie. Night. That's it's a like hilarious Halloween thing about too. it. It's like it's like they fucking this eighteen hour night. Like it's crazy. <laughs> it, it's, they're they're actually in like you know part of Alaska like, that's Alaska. near the Arctic Circle. <laughs> Adenfield, Illinois, just has this little. It's this little parts above the Arctic Circle. Um, no, it's just like this was. This movie's like it's just so unnecessary. Like the kills are fun, but the story is there's no story. Like there's nothing to it. So, and there's no titty. So one, no titty. Uh, what what is next month's theme, Alec? Kevin Cost November. Oh boy. <laughs> Anybody got a pick already? Waterworld. All right, we're Robin watching. Parentheses. Ooh, I don't have a pick yet, so it's between those two. Don't have a pick yet for Kevin Cost November. November. <laughs> hey, let me uh real quick put a recommendation for a movie that's fun about a whole town trying to kill somebody. Hmm. Is a movie that came out like three years ago, I think, called Assassin Assassination Nation. I've never okay. seen that. I heard it was it, good. It's a lot of fun, and it does end with like, like literally the entire town trying to kill these four girls. I need oh. to watch that. I think that's yeah. that was written by like somebody that I like in comics, uh, like Matt Fraction or something. I think wrote that. Yeah, I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, okay, so Robin Hood or Waterworld? Uh, Waterworld. Waterworld. I have no desire to watch Robin Hood ever again. All right, fine. Uh, well, you're gonna at some point. Yeah, you're gonna probably <laughs> watch the yourself. following week. You're probably gonna watch it. So don't don't because uh, I'll double down with the postman. Like, don't push it too far. Uh, that was gonna be my pick. It's the postman. Oof. It's gonna be a no, long I wanna, month. I, no, my pick is draft day. I want to watch. <laughs> you want to see the, the Cleveland Browns draft thriller? Hell draft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Draft the Cle- thriller. The Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Front office just intrigue <laughs> fest, which is draft day, where they're gonna pick a like a pick another quarterback that won't work out. Okay, yeah, it's, it's when they they get a I can't even. How think does of, the Titanic end? I'm trying to think of like failure Browns quarterbacks, and I can't even think of like a uh, Tim Couch, Couch, uh, Couch uh, Tom uh Johnny, Johnny Manziel. Manziel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tim uh, Couch was guy who was like 30 years old. Uh, Brandon Whedon. Brandon oh, Wheaton. Yeah. Oh, God, I forgot about him. Yeah. All right, so Waterworld next week, everybody. Uh, yeah. Enjoy Halloween. Uh, check your candy for cum if you go to Sean's house. <laughs> it's just cum. Oh, wait, wait, no wait, candy. All, it's just... all these warnings are going to show up on, like, November 3rd. So it's just a it's bucket cum. of cum with a ladle in it that says, help yourself, please be considerate. <laughs> Oh, oh that's brothers. gross. But when, when it was candy filled with gum, it was fine. But when it's just, when it's just the main course, then it's a problem. All right. I was still, I was trying to figure out logistically how you would create this candy filled. It's like gum. soup dumplings for perverts. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody, eat your own ass. See you later. A lot of it. A lot of it. Time to make some breakfast. <laughs>